Thank you for joining us in the Connection Point podcast, the Bible teaching ministry at Calvary, Melbourne. Hope you're all doing well and having a wonderful and blessed day. In today's video, I'd like to share with you, uh, and it's really just the start of a, a mini-series I like to do um, from time to time called Basic Training and the Foundations in Christian Living. Uh, today will be part one. And uh, what I'd like to share with you is just really some basic, uh, very practical, life-changing habits, daily disciplines, foundational elements that every Christian should do or know. Uh, from the time you're born again to the time you're in glory, every Christian, and, and whether you're in glory by death or by rapture, uh, these are some key uh, exercises, spiritual exercises that will help you grow in your walk with the Lord. So if you will, let's consider we're kind of having this fireside chat. We're in a cabin. Uh, we're chit-chatting about things in life and more specifically things relating to the Bible and Christian living. Or if you will, we're uh, grabbing a cup of coffee or tea, depends on your drink of choice, and we're going to sit down together and talk through some things. And if I had some time with you as a pastor, here are some things that I'd like to share with you and encourage you uh, with. Uh, so first of all, again, as our first lesson here in session and time together, uh, after wanting to hear about your testimony and how you received Christ as your Lord and Savior and how you came to uh, the, the relationship that you do have with the Lord and how you are born again and making sure you understand the gospel, the forgiveness of sins, your hope of eternal life through a personal love relationship with the Lord, making sure you understand and grasp that, we can now move on to some other practical spiritual elements and disciplines or exercises that will help you grow and get stronger in your faith. So the first piece of advice or counsel I would share with you is the importance of doing devotions. Now, uh, no one took me aside when I first came to the Lord and taught me to do devotions. It was something that I learned um, as I was growing in my walk with the Lord, talking to other pastors, reading other books and things like that. And there's things that kind of help mold and shape uh, how I do devotions. Uh, and if you spent time with any mature Christian, or if you're in church sometimes, you probably heard the term uh, devotions or quiet time. You know, and devotions are simply just a great way of getting and drawing closer to the Lord. A devotion is really a quiet time that you spend uh, praying, reading the Word, reflecting on what you just read, and uh, you're focusing on your relationship with Him. And, and we often say, again, Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship. And that, the, the point of that statement is simply that our... Uh, relationship, our righteousness isn't based on ritualistic behaviors or practices or or doing certain things, but it's about a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. This means that we don't have to do certain things, uh, or devotions, or prayer, or give, or read, or serve, because God demands it as a uh, requirement or prerequisite for salvation, but we do it because we want to. You look forward to doing, you look forward to praying, and giving, and serving, and reading, all those other things. Uh, a quiet time or devotions uh, is simply a regular time that you do, that you set aside, uh, an appointment that you keep with the Lord and allows you to block out other distractions and allows you to focus on your relationship with the Lord through practices like devotion or uh, which consists of prayer and reading through the Bible. But like all other Christian disciplines, it, it requires maintaining a regular uh, time in and of itself isn't the point. It's maintaining a close relationship with Christ, that is. So that's the important thing. But there needs to be some basic disciplines there. Uh, and here's the thing that really freed me up uh, many years ago. Um, so I wouldn't feel so anxious uh, that I, or feel so guilty not doing my devotional 
time or because I missed it because uh, of traveling or starting to work super early or something else that came up and I wasn't able to spend my devotional time with the Lord. Uh, but here's the thing, that God loves me the same, you know, uh, whether I do the devotions or not. Uh, not it, it, I, I'm not doing my devotions to earn his favor or blessing, but I do my devotions because I'm hungry for the word and I want to draw close to the Lord. I want to work on my relationship with him. Uh, we must not make devotions a, a task that needs to be kind of a, a, a check off their to do list. OK, so that's not what it's intended to do. You know, even though you might feel productive in, in doing that, uh, but that needs to be a priority. Uh, but it shouldn't be, oh, okay, I did my devotion thing. It's off my list now. That's not really the right approach that we need to have here. Uh, we do it because we want to spend time with the Lord. Now, a key focus that you want to have or develop with uh, devotions is that uh, you want this to become a normal or regular rhythm in your life. And one of the biggest challenges uh, of the Christian life is the tendency to go throughout our day and not be mindful of the presence of, or, 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 or we forget about the Lord. We just kind of do our own thing and we're not reminded of our relationship with the Lord. And while it's not intentional, it's easy to get so preoccupied, so distracted uh, with our daily lives that we lose the focus of the fact that God is there uh, present in every moment. And so God's presence becomes more significant in our everyday behavior as we start our time with him and making him a part of every aspect of our life. So to get started uh, in your devotions or your quiet time, whatever phrase you want to use, uh, you want to first of all schedule a time. You know, what time is the best time that works for you? Uh, usually the early morning is the best time to do it. And we see all these different examples, even in scriptures, early in the morning uh, do we see that. Uh, all the great men of faith and, and the history have all used early morning times. Uh, but really, any time that works works best for you. Uh, the important thing to do is to block some sort of time like an appointment. If you can't do it in the morning, maybe at lunchtime or afternoon or evening, whatever time that you can block some time off, just you and the Lord, that's it. And you need to keep a mindset or discipline that you need to guard and protect this time as much as you can. And this is vital. Uh, this is a vital relationship, vital appointment, if you will, uh, to help you function in your walk uh, with the Lord and living out your Christian faith. Everything that will come out of uh, your, your walk with the Lord starts with this time of devotion. And, and, and much of this is, uh, as much as it is up to you, but you need to find this consistent time for daily devotions. Make it a regular appointment uh, as much as possible. Uh, put it on your calendar. Put it in your phone. Write it on your planner. Whatever you need to do, but try to block this time. Uh, and do try to make a commitment and, and work on a, a regular quiet time every day. Um, but if you don't establish one consistently, other things will easily uh, crowd this time out. And so uh, after blocking this time, or if you're going to say, I'm going to do it in the mornings, where are you going to do it at? Finding a good spot, finding a good location. You want to find a good spot where you're able to focus with as little distraction as possible. Uh, typically, for me, I'll get up really early in the morning, uh, do mine either in the living room or on the on the couch or uh, at, the, at the table or where our kitchen is. Um, and, and sometimes I'll go into the office, uh, but usually I end up getting too distracted when I go into my office by all the different books that I have or the things that I need to do. And I sometimes just jump and start working. Uh, immediately. So I try to avoid my office uh, as much as possible unless uh, it's the only quiet spot that I've got for that time. But maybe you have a particular room. Maybe you have a, a favorite comfortable chair you like to, to go into. Do whatever you need to do. Make it a regular habit. Uh, and, and as long as it's not a place where you're going to be too distracted or 
or maybe you're going to get too comfortable, you end up falling asleep, but your body's probably telling you you need more rest as well. So don't feel guilty if you end up falling asleep. Anyways, uh, but wherever you choose, it's good to establish a specific place, a specific spot for your time of devotions. And once you do this, you'll find it easier to get uh, into the zone during your quiet times. You know, you don't have to wonder where am I going to go this time? What time should I do it? You kind of, it's already set for you. Just maintain that. Uh, sort of discipline. Um, now that you kind of sorted through that spot, how much time are you going to need? Well, um, I find 30 minutes to an hour is usually a good quality time, uh, uh, and, and many spend less than 30 minutes, uh, but uh, having an idea how you're going to structure this time is also going to make a, a significant difference in your uh, time of devotion. Uh, you can go longer if you desire to do it as well, uh, but a good average um, time of prayer, Bible reading, meditating, or thinking about the passage or the verse that spoke to you, maybe having some more time of prayer, it's, it's about 30 minutes. That's kind of a, a general average idea what you want to structure time aside. But do keep in mind, uh, just be flexible. You know, Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. It just depends on how things go. So now that we've kind of established uh, or set in our schedule the time and place, and and uh, now let's get into some of the nuts and bolts of uh, doing devotions. Uh, personally, there's about five steps that I usually take in this process. Uh, like we said, there's flexibility in doing this. I don't say do this every single time, um, but uh, generally this is kind of the set plan and direction I typically do. That works for me. So you got to find what works for you. I always start with a time of prayer. And uh, I'll talk more about this uh, in a moment of prayer. But uh, usually I just get in my heart right before the Lord. Uh, praying for wisdom and understanding. Uh, a heart to, to know the Lord more. Growing Him. Or if there's things I need to confess and get right with the Lord. Or just praying things for my day. Uh, but I always start with a time of prayer. And then I move into usually a time of reading some devotional books. Um, usually um, I'm reading about nine different ones at the moment. Uh, sometimes I read more, sometimes I less. It depends on the day, uh, what I'm reading, or if I just want to dive into the Word, I'll, I'll skip this time of devotional um, uh supplemental books. Uh, some of the authors, in case you're wondering, that I'm, I might be reading through some of their devotional stuff. Uh, could be from John MacArthur, Chuck Swindoll, Charles Stanley, K. Arthur, Neil Anderson, uh, Warren Wearsby, Billy Graham, John Maxwell, and, and uh, there's many others, but those are kind of generally di different ones that I'll read through from time to time. And there's uh, Our Daily Bread, there's other um, devotional stuff online, uh, Greg Laurie has some, um, uh, Tony Evans, etc. So the list goes on and on of different devotional stuff, but you want to find some good quality, solid teachers uh, that have some good devotional books that, that has some meat in it that inspires you, motivates you as well. Not fluffy stuff, but stuff that really helps challenge you in your walk with the Lord. So I, I go from devotional books and that kind of helps uh, just motivate me, helps me to focus. Uh, and then from there, I start reading through my Bible. I always have a uh, reading plan that I do every single year. Uh, I read through the Bible. Uh, so when I first came to the Lord back in uh, 93 uh, and up till to, to now, which is 28 years, I've read through the Bible for 28 times more than that. Uh, some years I've read more. Um, but every year I at least have a plan. I go through the Bible uh, from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, usually I'll read Old Testament, New Testament, usually in this plan, it breaks it up morning and evening, but I typically do both of those morning and evening plans in the one time. Uh, sometimes I change the translation. Uh, going to read, uh, and my normal uh, study and reading devotional is the New King James. Uh, it's my preaching version as well. Uh, but sometimes in my devotional time, I might read the New Living Translation, NIV, King James, English Standard Version, uh, NASB, etc. So I'll try different ones just to kind of spice and things up from time to time. But, but consistently, I'm always reading through the New King James. Uh, and again, there's many different Bible reading plans out there. But the key, I believe, is just reading through a book of the Bible. Uh, it could be reading from one to five chapters a day is good. It's not how much you go through. It's really 
more of getting that into you. Uh, and it's I've also found it very helpful to read out loud or quietly reading out loud. So that helps me uh, read through the passage slower. And uh, also I'm hearing it as well. Sometimes, um, even as I'm walking or listening in my car, uh, the U version. Uh, so I have different plans there, and I have it reading uh, through the, 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 the Bible in those different versions. So I'm always listening uh, to the Bible being read as well. From this time of reading through the Bible and time of devotional, I always try to take some time to journal. I have a little notebook uh, that I write down some key thoughts, uh, key verses, some quotes, or some other things that really ministered to me. So I date it so I can always go back and see what happened on this day or this request or this prayer or this verse, those sort of things that whatever spoke to me, I wrote it down. So I found that that's been very helpful for me and to remind me of some things or some uh, other great insights that's uh, helped me in my personal walk with the Lord. And then finally, the fifth part of um, uh, my devotional time is I close out in prayer as well. So I start in prayer, I end in prayer. Sometimes I use kind of an acronym, uh, the ACTS acronym. Uh, some of you uh, haven't heard this before. I don't do it verbatim. Okay, now here's the A, here's the C, here's the T, here's the S. Um, but it's just it's a simple flow of kind of getting into a, a bit of a rhythm and understanding of uh, praying. Uh, so A, as you know, is adoration. This is kind of where you're worshiping in the Lord that the uh, uh, he, that God is praiseworthy. You identify things perhaps during your Bible reading. You're adoring the Lord. You're worshiping Him in that aspect. Um, then you have the confession, uh, just as uh, we're reminded in 1 John uh, 1 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this is where we ask for forgiveness for our actions, our thoughts, our behaviors, our attitudes, those things that are not pleasing to the Lord. Perhaps there's other things as we read through things in our devotions that spoke to us that we need to get right with the Lord. So it's a time of confession. And then you have a time of thanksgiving. So being grateful, just thanking the Lord uh, for whatever comes to mind. Uh, but having this grateful um, attitude is so essential in Christian maturity. You know, it makes a difference in, in one's attitude, being thankful. It helps us to recognize the benefits and the blessings that come from the Lord. We have so much to be thankful for. And then lastly is the uh, supplication, the S. Uh, this is simply just making a request. It's interceding, uh, making your appeals or requests known to God for his uh, intervention in your life or perhaps in your loved ones, your friends, your situations that need prayer, uh, whatever you need to be praying for for that situation that day. Uh, the nice thing about this acronym of, of prayer of ACTS method is that it kind of places our requests in a system that's easy for us to remember. So it's easy to kind of just go through that uh, process process. Uh, sometimes I'll use the hand system. Uh, some of you may have heard of this before, where you have the thumb. Those are those closest to you. So uh, those are your family members. You're praying for them. And then your pointer finger. Those are the leaders, uh, leaders in your church, the pastor, the elders, um, youth, worship, etc., other leaders there. The middle finger, the government, uh, praying for your nation, praying for your military, uh, those in that sort of um, environment. The ring finger, uh, perhaps it's the weakest, the, those that are sick that need uh, just ministry and healing. And then the pinky is yourself, you know. So this is kind of a good grasp of praying through some of those uh, options. I've also seen where uh, praise is the thumb. You know, you meditate on God's promises and you praise him for who he is. Uh, the thanksgiving is the index finger. So you're thanking God for what he has done for you and your family and your church or your situation or whatever. Uh, the middle finger is intercession. This is where you're praying for others, uh, for their salvation, for your loved ones uh, and friends, uh, for church, um, you know, growth, etc. Um, then you have confession. Uh, the ring finger, again, confessing, repenting to God for our weaknesses and our sins and things like that. And then lastly, the petition, our pinky finger, is where you're asking God for our peace uh, or for your daily needs or whatever else comes to mind. So those are some other key ideas and how you could be praying through um, uh, in this time. Uh, prayer, or the other acronym for prayer, P-R-A-Y, uh, which are four weapons of powerful prayer, praise, 
uh, repent, ask, and yield. Yielding, surrendering everything over to the Lord. So those are some helpful, practical tips maybe that can help with the flow or structure of prayer. So, and and um, after my time of devotions, you know, and, and perhaps maybe there's other uh, things that you want to add to this time. You know, what I usually do after my time of devotions, I take a quick break, get another cup of coffee, get some water, etc. And then I'll read through several chapters of one of the different dozens of books that I'm currently reading through. Kind of depending on the mood or motivation that I might be in. Uh, but I'm reading through books on prayer for Christian living, missions, leadership, counseling, or theology. Uh, just a plethora of different things that I'm interested in or reading through on a, a regular basis. And I try to keep, for me personally, all this separate from my uh, weekly message prep. This is just for my personal growth. Um, and, and so I hope this time perhaps has been uh, beneficial, uh, some ideas or some direction when it comes down to what to do in devotions. Uh, Maybe you've got some questions. Maybe uh, you, you like to share what you do. Uh, please let us know in the comment section. You know, I'd love to hear what some of you guys are reading through or what you're doing in your de devotional time. Uh, in our next time together in our basic training series, uh, I'd like to dive a little deeper into the subject of prayer. Uh, and then we'll continue uh, with this series and going from different topics uh, within this um, series. So thank you for taking the time to join us in this session. Hope it's been helpful and beneficial. Until next time, may the Lord radically and outrageously bless you.